everyone. It has been a while since I have come on here and I wanted to do a video today where I talk more in depth about mast cell activation, histamine intolerance, chronic allergies, and all the uh, similar conditions that come under this umbrella and similar symptoms that come under this umbrella, even for people who have not been formally diagnosed. Uh, before I get into that, I do want to uh, give a brief summary of what's going on with my business. So uh, right now, the main thing I am working on is going over application reviews for people who have applied to be a part of my intensive coaching programs. I have two intensive coaching programs that I am launching at the beginning of July. These are brain resilience and immune resilience. Uh, the programs are actually fairly similar. The content is going to be fairly similar, but they are going to be uh, geared a little bit more specifically um, for people on, on kind of different ends of the immune nervous system dysregulation spectrum. So for people whose primary symptoms are much more chronic allergy, um, you know, histamine reactivity, mast cell reactivity uh, in nature, uh, you're gonna want the immune resilience coaching program because you're gonna be in a small group of people who have similar symptoms to you and so you're gonna get that uh, community experience of, of working on healing with people who have similar stories to you. Um, on the other hand, my brain resilience is going to be more for people who are dealing with chronic fatigue, uh, adrenal burnout, um, you know, dysautonomia or any kind of neurological symptoms. Obviously for a lot of people, they're gonna have both. And for people who are gonna have both, definitely go into the immune resilience one because that's gonna be more geared for people who are a little more highly sensitive and reactive to things, um, where the brain resilience uh, pro program is going to be more focused on people who nervous system dysregulation is really the primary issue they're dealing with. You know, you might have some sensitivities and things like that, of course, but uh, that's really what you want to be focusing on. So a lot of overlap, but you know, kind of a apply for the one that you think fits you the most and then in our application review we'll talk through it and decide which one will really be best for you or if you know if you would are appropriate for these programs at all they are going to be very intensive six month programs um, so definitely not for everyone but for people who really want to take their recovery to the next level. Outside of that, I still have my Rebuild Your Histamine Response self-guided course that is available. It's a wonderful community that is growing every day. There is just uh, a community of really stellar people on there uh, who are all really focused on retraining their brains, on rebuilding their immune systems, and on really transforming on a, on a deep level. So it's a wonderful community on there. There are detailed protocols uh, for how to rebuild your histamine response. So for people who are a little more independent or want something that they can just kind of um, go at their own pace with, this is a self-guided course with a associated community forum. And so that is available for you as well. And uh, last but not least, I am no longer taking one-on-one -on -one clients, uh, but I have hired two fantastic clinicians uh, in my practice. One is Suzanne, who you may recognize from the interview uh, with Gia's mom. <laughs> uh, Gia was a wonderful, is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful young woman that I worked with uh, to help reverse her neur neuropathy and dysautonomia and uh, chronic fatigue and digestive issues, a, a whole host of things that um, she was dealing with as a very young um, teenager uh, so very sadly but she has managed to make a full recovery and now her mom Suzanne is dedicated to helping other moms and other families uh, recover from things that maybe conventional medicine has not been able to touch so uh, Suzanne is uh, taking clients and also my husband, Mike, who has a history himself of recovering from uh, obesity and metabolic syndrome, as well as a lot of mental health issues um, such as depression and anxiety. And so he is working with people who uh, have any of that constellation of issues and uh, uh, intake appointments uh, are uh, open for both on my website. So that is what is going on with my business. But now into the topic at hand, uh, a lot of the content of mine that tends to go viral and tends to get uh, a lot of people's attention is stuff around mast cell activation, histamine intolerance, and undiagnosed chronic allergies. Um, so I think this is because most people do not understand these conditions and the fact that I have personally had these conditions and also um, recovered 
fully from them um, and have helped many other people recover from them. Uh, this is really surprising to a lot of people. Um, again, because there's just not a lot of education out there. Unfortunately, a lot of doctors, even a lot of allergists, just um, understand these conditions only from a very technical or academic standpoint as opposed to a more functional uh, standpoint. And unfortunately, this can carry over even into alternative functional holistic medicine where often it ends up just kind of being, you know, Western medicine light, where it's like, okay, you're actually using the same framework really of, you know, symptom reduction uh, and dividing the body into discrete systems and treating everything separately, um, but you're just using vitamins and herbs instead of pharmaceuticals. Um, and this does not work when you have something like mast cell activation, histamine intolerance, chronic allergies, um, chemical sensitivities, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm gonna be just kind of talking about that whole umbrella. Now, there are some things that I think people are very confused about, especially because people are being getting genetic testing a lot more often now. Um, and some people are finding that, oh, I have these mutations you know, in the kit gene, or they have hereditary alpha tryptase, um, which are you know, so-called genetic uh, forms of these conditions. Um, and I really want to bust that myth <laughs> because I think it leads people into a lot of despair uh, that, you know, okay, I'm just doomed to have this disease and be sick my whole life and I am just defective and I have these genes that are just wrong. Um, and people really start identifying as an ill person, right? As a genetically defective person. And this is incredibly problematic because the reality is these are new diseases. <laughs> These are conditions that um, do not exist in traditional cultures. There are not people who have these skin problems, who have allergies. Like these are Western phenomena and they are recent phenomena. Now, I will say that um, if you have these genes, right? If you have these genetic predispositions, you are going to be more likely to develop these symptoms when your body is under environmental stress. And frankly, I mean, you know, read the section on the history of food in my book, uh, but we have a long history of being under stressful situations that are not particularly evolutionarily congruent. I mean, the first of that happened literally with the advent of agriculture like 10,000 years ago, but has just increased um, exponentially, especially since the Industrial Revolution. This is really when we see things taking a turn uh, for our health on a, on a mass scale. Um, and it's really just accelerated since then, especially post-World War II and um, the boom, uh, the, the booming medical pharmaceutical industry and uh, the processed food industry, um, you know, the, the mass use of pesticides and fertilizers, all of these kinds of things. Um, and we see that the people who have these hereditary predispositions, these are the people that can look back and be like, my great great grandma had eczema, right? When that was so rare at that time, right? Or like, oh yeah, my great grandpa was always like super red in the face and was always sneezing and um, could only eat a few foods. Like he ate oatmeal, <laughs> you know, like oatmeal and chicken every day. And that was like what he could eat because uh, he would always get digestive issues. Again, those kinds of symptoms were so rare at that time that they really stand out. But again, when you have these kinds of genetic predispositions, really what you are is that canary in the coal mine, right? I love that phrase because it really does describe like if you have these genes where you tend to be more sensitive to environmental stressors you are going to be the first people to develop these kinds of conditions when the environment starts taking a negative turn and we start experiencing higher levels of toxicity in the environment and encountering things that could damage the microbiome um, which you know again really started and started ramping up post the industrial revolution and then especially post world war ii so if you have those genes you probably have a family history like that uh, but again that doesn't mean um, genetics are destiny because again, even people with those genes who may have had a great grandma with those kinds of symptoms, um, that was still extremely uncommon, right? And so basically what's happening is now that the stressors are just 
mounting, right? Like as we have gotten more and more to the present. And I mean, I think the last 10 to 20 years has been, I mean, really even the last three years, right? Has really, really exploded these conditions because you know, mast cell activation was first described in the early 2000s. They didn't even really um, identify, um, they kind of identify that like, okay, we think there might be a constellation of symptoms like this that may lead to a diagnosis someday, like in the 90s, right? And, and so, and even in 2016, when I was diagnosed, like no one knew about this. It was extremely rare, like it was considered a rare disease you know, that kind of had like just started being described. Um, I remember my allergist telling me like, we're just finding out about this in the last 10 years when she diagnosed me. Like she was like, you're really lucky that like, I just happened to have learned about this because this is a totally new thing. And even when you talk to or listen to mast cell specialists in the conventional medicine field, even people like Dr. Afrin, um, like they will say allergic diseases are exploding in the last 10 to 20 years. So it's not just about genetics. It's about how our genes interplay with extreme environmental stressors. And if you have certain key mutations, you're going to be much more likely to be affected by those. And your family may have been for more generations than most other people. So I hope that makes sense. I just really want to bust this myth that this is a purely genetic disease that some people just get and then are doomed to. That's not how genes work. Genes always interplay with the environment. Um, and basically what these constellation of conditions are really indicating is that the immune system has been under extreme duress. And this is basically like the last ditch effort of the immune system being like, well, maybe if I get into a state of chronic allergic reactivity, I can manage, right? Like if I get into a state of, of chronic systemic inflammation and I'm constantly releasing these uh, protective inflammatory compounds into the body, maybe then I can keep this person alive from this extreme toxicity, from this extreme overgrowth of microbes um, that tends to occur, you know, from um, all of the nutritional imbalances, right, that are happening. This is your immune system trying to save your life and you have to trust that if your immune system was not reacting in the way that it is, that you would be worse off, that you might be dead, that your body would not be able to buffer the toxicity that is inside of you, um, of the uh, overgrowth that is inside of you, the, the immune system would not be able to buffer that and keep you relatively safe, <laughs> right? Unless it was reacting in this way. So your body does have your best interest in mind, even if it feels like it is making you miserable by having these extreme and chronic reactions all the time. I know that is sometimes hard to wrap your head around when you're in the throes of debilitating flares, Believe me, I have been there. I know how miserable it can feel to feel like your body is just turning on you, but that is not what is happening. What's happening when you're having a flare is that your body is trying to buffer you from the exposure to an extreme toxin. Um, and that can be from overgrowth, can be from a synthetic toxin. Um, and really what we have to do is take away those environmental stressors. And if we do that, the symptoms resolve. And I see this over and over again. That does not mean it's always easy or simple, right? A lot of times by the time you've gotten something like mast cell activation, you have layers and layers of toxicity and overgrowth and nutrient imbalances. I mean, it's just like, it goes very deep by the time we've gotten to that point because we're really resilient. Like we can have a lot of imbalance and actually do okay, right? We can have a lot of toxic exposure and actually do okay. So if it's gotten to that point, you may have that genetic sensitivity and susceptibility, but you also have an immense amount of toxic exposure and imbalance. Um, and so it can take time, but as we remove those layers of toxicity and imbalance, the immune system can settle down. And as soon as the immune system sees that it can settle down, it will. Um, so what I do is I don't just reduce the symptoms because I don't see that as actually helpful. Um, the symptoms are there to save you. The symptoms are there to protect you. And if we just try to reduce the symptoms by taking 
quercetin and, you know, antihistamines and doing a low histamine diet, you know, all of these things can be life-saving. So I'm not trying to minimize the importance of these interventions in the short term, but that's not the answer, right? Because what you're actually doing is you're actually trying to stuff down the body's healing and protective mechanisms. And instead, we need to actually support those healing and protective mechanisms in order to resolve the symptoms fully, right? So, so supporting the, the healing mechanisms on a deeper level through refeeding key nutrients and rebalancing the microbiome, um, detoxifying, getting the nervous system regulated, all of these kinds of things is really the key. So my protocols do not just teach you how to walk on eggshells even better around your body. They don't teach you just how to stuff down the symptoms and just feel better. In fact, sometimes people start feeling worse in the, in the short term because we are actually giving your body the tools to fight what it has been trying to fight for so long. Um, but the result of that is that you don't have to be on a low histamine diet the rest of your life. You don't have to take antihistamines the rest of your life. You don't have to be reliant on supplements the rest of your life or medications the rest of your life. You don't have to walk on eggshells around your body anymore. You don't have to avoid any kind of chemical or mold exposure, right? Like you can build that immune resilience. Um, name of my program. <laughs> um, so, Let's talk about, well, I'll talk about my, my, um, my healing story first. Um, my healing story was very long. I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> uh, I have learned a lot since then. And so I've been able to really refine what I have seen works with my clients and their recoveries uh, tend to be a little faster than mine. Um, but, uh, you know, still, when you do the right things, right, and you pace yourself appropriately, you can fully recover within a few years, generally. Um, and really, it's just about actually getting to the root causes and not just band-aiding those root causes, but really giving your body an opportunity to fully heal those root causes. So for me, I had heavy metal toxicity, I had severe leaky gut with bacterial overgrowth, parasitic overgrowth, I had viral overgrowth. A lot of my symptoms were triggered after uh, 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 getting shingles. Um, I was living in a moldy apartment when I first got very sick, uh, and so mold exposure was definitely a part of it. Um, I was also a fairly heavy substance user in my young adulthood and uh, was under just a lot of stress. I was working very stressful jobs and really overworking and overplaying, right? I was like working hard and then playing hard uh, and not actually giving myself time for recovery. Um, and so when people ask me how to find out their root cause, I basically give them this list because in my experience, most people I work with who have developed some kind of allergic condition, you know, such as mast cell activation, they have all of these things going on. And so you can spend thousands of dollars on tests that are all gonna come up positive or maybe give you a misleading false negative because that happens all the time. I see people test for parasites, it comes up negative and then we start healing them and they pass parasites, right? So you can get false negatives on tests um, and basically it just confirms what I'm already going to assume <laughs> when we start working together, right? Because again, for the immune system to get to this state, it really has to be assaulted on all fronts, right? Um, because this is an extreme reaction of the immune system to extreme stressors. So uh, when people, some people will start just detoxifying their lifestyle, start uh, eating kind of a low carbohydrate, whole foods diet. Um, you know, they will start just doing some basic meditation or nervous system regulation practices. Um, they will just do these kinds of things that are fairly basic. You know, you can read my book and just kind of get those, those basic foundations. And some people will start seeing resolution of symptoms, right? Again, it just, it's really a factor of how much support your immune system needs in order to get the upper hand of whatever it's trying to fight. And for some people, that's just a few really simple interventions in their lifestyle and in their diet. Um, now, for people who have more 
stubborn symptoms that do all those basic things and they're still really struggling. I was one of those people. <laughs> um, usually what I see is that they are missing one of the following factors. One is that they don't have an education on plant toxins. And I see that um, sensitivities to lectins and oxalates are very, very common. And those are not addressed by just going on a basic low histamine whole foods diet. Uh, and some people, you know, I think we should have resilience to these plant toxins in the long term. These are natural compounds found in plants that we've always eaten, right? They're not inherently evil or terrifying, right? But they are they are truly toxic, right? Um, so if we do not have enough resilience in our immune system or in our gut lining or in our nervous system, we can um, have a strong reaction to them and this can actually be an obstacle to our healing. And so I always educate people on things like lectins and oxalates because I find that if we pull those out in the short term, it usually leads to faster healing. Um, and then often you can bring those back in in moderation once you have recovered. The other thing is that uh, sometimes people need a more intensive protocol to really seal the leaky gut, right? So um, the gut should be always repairing itself, you know? And so if you have, um, for some people, again, just like a whole foods, lower carb diet, um, you know, and, and really just improving their healthy lifestyle practices overall will be enough of, of a support that the gut will just start healing spontaneously. But for a lot of people with mast cell, they actually need um, a much more intensive protocol, which sometimes I, I, you know, lovingly call the soup protocol or baby food protocol, right? Where you eat just very soft and warm foods and you eliminate all starches out of your diet uh, for a period of time. And this is kind of the specific carbohydrate diet approach or GAPS approach. I am a GAPS practitioner, so I use a lot of that theory in my work and I find it to be extremely effective, um, but obviously I have my own take on it. Uh, and this is what I do for clients who have more stubborn symptoms that haven't been able to um, get, at, get at their, you know, um, really haven't been able to resolve things other ways. Um, and then, of course, uh, there is the toxicity issue. And I find that a lot of people have stubborn overgrowth because the overgrowth of, you know, yeast or, you know, fungus or um, bacteria or parasites, whatever it is, is actually buffering them from high amounts of toxicity in their tissues. So these are people who maybe do not detox as efficiently, right? And so they tend to... Um, accumulate more toxicity in their tissues that their body has not been able to process out. So people uh, sometimes have to really focus on the detoxifying practices. And by this, I do not mean like a quick fix cleanse or detox protocol, right? I mean very simple, basic practices that you do daily, sometimes for years, to gently support your body in removing this toxicity in a way that is safe. For your body and that your body can handle. Um, and so I work with this a lot. There's a detoxification chapter in my book as well as uh, a, a, a detoxification section in my Rebuild Your Histamine course that is really focused on how to do this in a way uh, that is going to be safe for your level of reactivity. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about people I see who heal the fastest. And people I see who heal the fastest are ones that are in healthy relationships. They have a deep faith and trust in their body's ability to recover. And they see their flares and they see their bad days as a part of their overall healing process and not of going backwards or losing progress or as something they did that is wrong. I see people who start treating detoxification as a lifestyle practice as opposed to just a crash fix, right? This is not like I'm gonna go sauna every day for two weeks and think that that's gonna detox all the heavy metals in my body, right? I'm not gonna take a ton of chlorella, you know, over a week and think that that's gonna cleanse me, right? But people who do small but intentional practices every day, sometimes for years, 
people who really get to know their own nervous system and really start learning to tune in and listen to their body signals and start to see their symptoms as messages from the nervous system telling them what is going on and learn to compassionately listen to those signals as opposed to catastrophize every time they have a symptom um, or not notice anything until it gets really really big the other thing I see is that the people who have no goal of becoming normal again are actually most likely to be able to live a so-called normal life again, right? You know, from the outside, I probably look like I live a totally normal life now. Most people I meet and encounter like don't even know that I have a history of chronic illness these days, right? Because I just live my life, right? And maybe I skip the bread at the potluck, <laughs> but, uh, like most people don't don't know that about me, right? Um, and I decided very early on in my recovery that even if I never got better, the changes I was making were worth it. And uh, I see this over and over again in my clients, the ones that just accept that like, okay, the universe is telling me that I need to live my life in a different way and that is just what they accept. They're the ones most likely to actually fully recover. So it really is those very specific factors that I see correlated the most with the people who really fully heal. Um, and that is a lot of what I'm going to be coaching on in my intensive coaching program, Immune Resilience. So I already have uh, spots filling up. There's only a couple spots left. So make sure you apply for that. Uh, and even if you don't make it into this round, I will be starting another cohort in the fall. So still make sure you apply, uh, even if you're seeing this late. And um, yeah, I hope this was a helpful rundown of all things chronic allergies, mast cells, and histamines. Please comment with any questions.